Uh, hello, YouTubers and Twitch alike. Welcome aboard Flying with Mike. Uh, we are down under today, believe it or not. We are in Australia flying for an airline called, well, actually, it's Piedmont Virtual. Uh, but we're flying for one of the uh, historic airlines they uh, have in their repertoire and set. And we're uh, sitting in Sydney. We're going to head off out over the ocean to Norfolk Island. So I hope you enjoy it. We're retroing it today, bringing out the three whole Earth 727. So I hope you all enjoy. Sorry for such a late start. Hopefully I can make up for it with this run, uh, with all the work I was doing behind the scenes. But, uh, you know, time will tell. So, but anyway, yes, we have the 727. And from the looks of it, and set really kept it simple um yeah pretty much a white plane with the word and set i think one said australia and a pretty neat logo on the tail hang on let me uh, kind of work my way that way kind of let you get a lay of what we're flying today this is x plane 11 before people go <gasps> They have the 727 and 12? No, we don't. Yeah, I know. It's a bummer still. And if we do, I wish someone would tell me so I could get it in here. But they don't. <clears throat> so we'll fly an X-Plane. Folks, X-Plane 11 is not bad. So, I mean, even we've been back a couple times. And I'm here to tell you it's not all that bad. The only bad thing, if I'm going to say about X-Plane 11, this is horrid that the uh, uh, SAM program met up with the door like that. Man, or that, or our airport crews at Mid-America were working with it, and that's how the jetway ended up. I don't know. But anyway, and I don't mean sorry about that, folks, at AT uh, Airport, so uh, uh, sorry about that. Couldn't resist. But anyway, um, yeah, kind of missed. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh well, we'll get over it. Let's just get in the office. Look at that, it's gone. We don't even see it. All right, but let's start back here. You know I'm going to have fun, folks. If you're familiar in any way with the 727, you know it's one of my favorite ones to start with a little joke in the beginning. Three people running it, but yet really only one did all the work of those three, which is not me. That's today's flight. Back in the day, this guy right here, the flight engineer, he did most of the work. He made sure the engines were working. The pressurization was good. Temperatures for Muffy and Buffy in the back were at a at a, a applicable temperature for him. It wasn't too tepid or too, you know, just wasn't. They just had a great flight. Uh, the hydraulics were working, all of that. This man handled it, including the fuel. So uh, um, he's the one that all the applause should usually go to because he kept them focused up front, the pretty boys flying the plane and being able to do their little parade wave as they taxied. Um, just kidding. Those guys worked their butts off too, believe me. Those old older aircraft aren't as easy to control as they are today. I mean, they made it look easy, but they had a lot of work there. But I do love having fun with them. All right, let's hop up here in the captain's seat where we can look like a pretty boy. Even though you can't see me, you can go, yeah, you're not a pretty boy. Uh, but anyway, um, anyway, so we're up here. Uh, you can tell old, classic, I mean, all the old gauges and all in place this is how it was folks this is how what started those of us that like the bus those of us that like the boeings of today this is how it started folks uh so a lot of gauges um you want to have fun there's a bugs bunny commercial out there where bugs bunny's trying to learn how to fly in this big panel in front of him with nothing but dials and gauges and buttons and switches yeah that's kind of how it was back in the day folks so well, let's kick this off and take a look at uh, sim brief 
and then uh, we're going to file our flight plan on VATSIM. So I hope uh, you all want to join in on VATSIM. Love to have you. We're sitting in Sydney. We'll be online here shortly. Just want to set that up to 400 for now. There we go. All right. So SIM Toolkit, where are you hiding? There it is. Okay. Y'all probably noticed we got a little bit of an interesting departure. We have rain and lots of it here in the, in Sydney. So uh, interesting that there's no departures going eastbound, SID departure types. Um, but there are everything SID-wise, standard instrument departure-wise goes west. Go figure. So, I mean, I even question, I just go direct Dipso, but I guess so. So the flight for today here, if it hasn't showed, like I think it has not, goes a little like that. We're going to take off maybe 16 left. I don't know. Well, no, we're closer to 16 right, so we'll do that. Um, and we'll fly off and fly the Sydney 2 portion of the departure. And then join in on the, <laughs> go figure, uh, stream elements caught up with me and threw it up there anyway again for you. Um, and then we'll make our turn on course. In essence, this would be a vectored departure, probably would turn us west to go north to go east. So we don't fly into the path of the aircraft taking off on the left side. But that's today. All right, so weather-wise, well, you can already tell it's wet by wet. Uh, we have light showers. Go figure. Winds 150 at 20. So make sure those toupees are strapped on today, folks, if you're in the Sydney area. Or I guess I should say tonight, since it is like 22, 2300 Zulu or 23 local, something like that I think it is right now. But uh, anyway, I could be wrong. Um, unlimited visibility, light showers, few clouds of 1,500 scattered. Our ceiling is set at 3,500 feet. Broken or overcast sets that. It's 19 degrees out there. Dew point at 16 degrees. And there's our altimeter. So not the greatest of greatest days here. Now let's take a look at... Norfolk Island, uh, 090 at 13, 4900, uh, I think this is in meter. no, it can't be meters. Well, anyway, f uh, drizzle, overcast, 200. Ooh, we're going to have to look if we're legal to go. Ooh, <laughs> I think we're right at the numbers, folks, 23 and 23. So, yeah, this could get fun. Oh, and we're in an airplane with not a great auto land. <laughs> this ought to be fun. Welcome aboard. You all are definitely getting your price of admission for today in this flight. Oh, all right. So I uh, didn't know that, folks. I really hadn't looked at my flight plan yet. So loadout for today. 93 people going to enjoy this one. <laughs> Yeah, and you're going out over this, folks, which is called the Pacific Ocean, so there really isn't a lot of alternates out there. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you our alternate here in a minute. It could very well be right back here in Sydney. Um, but anyway, 93 people uh, signed the uh, non-disclosure paperwork, so they won't disclose just how bad I violate FAA rules. Uh, 21,390 pounds on the plane. You see the zero fuel weight will be putting 35,500 pounds of fuel in the plane. Going to be cruise profiled at Mach 0.80 at 35,000 feet. So, folks, going to be a great ride today. Oh, yeah. Could break some rules. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So, uh, yeah, no, you see in the top it says I'm late. Well, yeah, I know I'm late. Uh, went late in my uh, pr uh, prep for this. So, all right, folks, let's get rid of Sim Brief and uh, let's uh, get ready to rumble, as they say. 
All right, so we are basically at a point where we can start letting the passengers in the plane. I've done quite a bit prior to getting us going, but uh, we've checked the logbook, uh, the land here. Let me just kind of show you what I'm working from here. Uh, I think it's that one, yeah. All right. So I'm working from a uh, checklist. You can find these up on uh, the, uh, just Google it, 727 FJS X-Plane. They'll come up with a whole litany of them, and you'll be able to uh, get this one. It look for Solaris. And it's not who I'm flying for, folks. It's just the other, the other checklist that comes with it. And uh, does a good job, I think. Um, fills in all the blanks and all that good stuff. Now, Piedmont has one, but because it's for Piedmont members, I don't usually show those things off. So uh, if you want to see it, you want to learn how to fly these, come on over to Piedmont, folks. Ooh, great bunch of people and great standards of flight that they want you to fly at. So, um, by the way, Piedmont Virtual, don't watch this flight because I got a feeling we might break a rule or two. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> we'll see what it's like when we get there 200 oh my goodness all right so uh that technically is legal for a departure by the way folks uh well let me make sure hang on uh let's see um get my uh, approach chart up here 29 Hmm. Technically, by the chart, huh, they don't have an ILS. They do not have an ILS. Huh. What's our winds again? Hang on. Let, I'm just right now making sure we're able. Zero, nine, zero, 13. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one then. All right. Well. If the uh, weather is 200 overcast, wow, we are below minimums. Uh, hang on, let's see. Anything down here? We're uh, good on the uh, kilometers. Oh, we're going to go. So... Yeah, we're going to be right at minimums, folks, if not touch below. Um, and I, I know I can hear you guys. Just cover your ears. No. <laughs> it's flight sim for crying out loud. All right. So uh, the, the FMC is what we're running with. Briefings, oxygen, mass, fuels, good. Well, we haven't loaded any of that yet. Passenger signs. Let's go on up here. Let's get them turned on, and they are on. Uh, hydraulic pumps are set. Oh, something's not right there. Hang on. Oh, that's why. Glad we checked. The B system was supposed to be on. Okay. Uh, oil coolers were normal. Flight pressurization system is sitting in ground. And, of course, I'll probably get over here and we're going to move back. Uh, we can switch the packs on now. Gas per valve on. And the galley power on. Okay, auto brakes. RTO. Takeoff warning horn. Good. And we'll get our navs and comms set up altitude as well here. Parking brake is set. And ailerons and rudder trims good. We are at a point where we can start boarding. Ah, I forgot we had that on here. Okay, well, doggone it. We had it right here in front of us and didn't even know it. All right. 
So to load this plane real easily, folks, we're just going to get on the right menu here. There we go. All right, so we were looking at uh, 93 passengers. All right, and there's 93. That's our total right there. Now, our zero fuel weight, that needs to read next page. Uh, little bit. Uh, we need 123, 146. We are currently reading that. So let's throw a bin of cargo here. Let's put a second one in there. I'm actually going to move some peeps around. Try and get that center of gravity closer to 25. Oh, that ain't going to help us. Let's get this guy. All right, that's better. And we're now standing at 121. We could still put on more. All right, I'm going to go ahead and throw a body in the back. Let's see, that's 94. One twenty-three. that's close enough. 200, so it took two more bodies and three bins of cargo to get us there. 25, 1,250 pounds each. <clears throat> okay, so we got the aircraft loaded there, and now let's go to the fuel weight. Fuel weight for the flight is, the rum roll, 35,500 currently at 25 so I'm just going to click the plus run it up five seventy what's the other one we'll go with five seventy now it says I'm past my landing weight so Okay, something's not right here. Oh, optimum. Never mind. Uh, in theory, if for some reason we have to return, we're going to either dump fuel or stay in a hold burning it down, depending on the severity of the emergency. Most likely, we dump the fuel to get under landing weight. Okay, this is one of those planes you're going to have to do that with. Um so that's why it's red so right now we have more weight uh than what our maximum landing allows us uh however everything else is good our max takeoff and zero fuel weight are not met so we're good there and we're loaded all right so takeoff weights are good eprs let's check those well the top one there brings up your calculator Okay, so we're going to have a normal EPR of 2.15, uh, 97.4 for N1. So this gauge here will be up about 97.5 when we're on takeoff roll. Uh, we're going to be flaps 20, V1's 126, 126, 138. It does not tell you how much runway you're eating up. That's the only criticism of this plane I really have, aside from the pressurization, um, or lack thereof. 5.5, that's the stave trim, and uh, here's our flap schedule, okay? Now, makes it easy. All we got to do is set bugs this way by clicking it, and you saw the bugs move. So there's our V1. Uh, rotates here v2 and this is i believe actually this kind of set kind of wonky okay so let's oh v1 v2 v 
Okay, so yeah. All right. I see what it did. And then we work our way up 168 for our uh, first notch of flaps up. I will have already moved it up to 240 by then so we can do a nice steady climb and we're ready to, to get going. V-speed stave trim. Stave trim in this plane is easy. Once we power up, get the hydraulics going, we just click here and it's set. All right, after that, folks, we are ready to go. So, <laughs> fun day ahead. All right, so let's see here. I need to get online. That's what I need to do first. Light. Vatsim. Just waiting on the pre-file page. It is spinning. Okay. Just making sure it didn't time out on me. It's confusticated. It doesn't know what I want. It's still spin. Oh, there we go. All right. So 1740. Yeah, we're not getting up then. Uh, what are we right now? 18. Oh, we might get 1840. That's not bad. Alternate and WWW in triple W. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Dipso, G595 uh, to Gut 4, Direct Abarb, and uh, the Bravo 450 to NF, which is our island. All right, so PBN, none of this came over. Nice of it. We'll just do that. Nav is. It doesn't take, but I have a cheat sheet set up for that. Actually, all of it. Okay. And we put that in. RVR 100. Oop, oop, oop. And we are AK LP. Filing. Filed. I just noticed my equipment is off. Oh, well. Right now, we don't have controllers, so that shouldn't pose a problem. But uh, maybe it will. Who knows? All right, so I'm filing the f into uh, a triple A 8701. And we are a... E seven two two. You guys will definitely probably see me in anything but a seven twenty seven because model matching isn't all the greatest in that sim, or at least in my opinion. Okay, you guys may have programs and much greater knowledge in that to make it work right. It doesn't work right for me. So, all right. Cup, quick cup of coffee here. Hang on. All right. Flight attendants tell me they're ready to go back there. I'm ready to go. I think you all are ready to go. All right. So before taxi is where we're going to be at. Now, let's do a quick down and dirty, if you will, of the plane here. Okay, off here to the side, this is all of your working stuff. So, you, like you've already seen this, the, the performance, the load manager, you've even seen the options. A lot of stuff here. Quick caveat, folks, this is a phenomenal 726. It's a great aircraft, does a lot of things. There is a huge bug with it. I don't know why FlyJ has yet to fix it. Hopefully when it comes to 12, it will be fixed. Uh, it is why you do not see the TCAS gauge here. It crashes to desktop the plane. So what I recommend when you buy the aircraft, get all three of them in there, go into each one of them. And hang on, I happen to have another cheat sheet. Oh, I closed it out. Duck on it. Stand by.
um, got to remember exactly the folder to tell you. So go into each one of the Fly J Sim aircraft. You've got a 100, a dash 200, and a freighter. Okay, so dash 100, dash 200, dash 100. Look for in those folders the plugin in the aircraft, not the overall plugin for X plane. I'm talking each of those aircraft. Um, remove this folder inside that plugin folder for the aircraft. X TCAS. You should at that point not see any crash to desktops. Most, if not all, are attributed. Oh, no, I'm not going to say all because there are other things that could cause it not even related to the 727. But most will be alleviated by taking that folder out. Sad thing is you, you, you lose the TCAS capability on your VSI. Okay, that's what this is all about. <clears throat> So hopefully these guys at Fly JSM, when they make this available for X-Plane 12, fix that, please. Now, you can do, if you have the SIVA um, INS system, I'm not going to purchase it uh, because I had a lot of problems uh, with it. It would not reset once it got into an error just flat out wouldn't so I won't uh, but I'm not saying that it will happen that way to you I'm thinking I did something because I needed to shut down quick and it said well you didn't do that right so nanny nanny boo boo okay fine and then I went and got an FMC and flew that plane from then on with it that's why I use the FMC now you could go just nav VOR to VOR be tough on this run really would be but I think it could be done. Um, or run with the FMS, and it's just the standard X-Plane FMS. Okay. Next uh, one up is the maintenance system. By turning this on, you turn failures on, folks. So these are going to wear out, and believe me, this one wears my patience out sometimes, how many GPU or APU generators we go through. But it is what it is. If you don't want it, leave it off. And over here is how to look at that. Engine one needs maintenance. Oh, and my APU gen had failed at some time. Repair, repaired. And that's it, they're repaired. Um, and I don't think this is the equivalent to the one in x-plane if you throw those failures at it finally down here is a checklist now this you can actually go in and modify and make it how you want it there read the the uh, manuals that come with the plane they tell you how to do it i actually like it this way because i could go through and do a quick did i do this did i did i did i did i so really nice quick checklist some of them are a little bit lengthy but you know hey that's how flying can be sometimes folks and while we're sitting here waiting let me come up on piedmont All right, we're up on that. All right, so as you can see, the battery is on, the APU, or we're on ground power. We're on ground power right now. Stall warning has been checked, and where that is is right here. Emergency lights are armed right here. Passenger signs right here. Window heat coming on. Okay, radar, radio, transponder set. Now, this aircraft, folks, has the transponder above you. So don't be looking for it down here. Uh, 
and it's uh, currently set. And the parking brake is set. Now, to start the APU, very simple to do, folks. We just turn the switch on. With the up arrow showing, click it, hold it for three, two, three. And then we're going to see the EGT coming up. Real 727 pilots out there. I ask this just about every stream. <clears throat> Does the APU, or do you remember? Because I know this plane, for the most part, has been gone. Now, Australia may be one of those oddball countries where it didn't leave for quite a little while after everyone else, including FedEx and UPS. Um, does the APU spool up to like five or six here, and then when it should spool down, continue up? And if so, what does that mean? Or is that even something I have to really give a darn about? Because I don't in the airplane. I just go ahead, put the gen on, and go. I think it's getting to the max right now. And looks like it's continuing up. So is that a problem? Would that be considered a problem with the APU that needed to be looked at? Or is that uh, just don't worry about it kind of deal? All right, we're on the gen. Okay, come back here to the overhead. Switch over to APU. And then we can actually get rid of the GPU cart and the air cart. Okay, and I am going to go ahead and get rid of the jetway and get these engines fired up. Okay. Be gone. Here we go. Okay, to start the engines, what I try to do is set the, the view up so I can see the engine switches the start valves and then all I got to do is go straight down to the to the valves. I'm going to start number three first. Start valves open and I move it in a little so I can see the gauges so when I hit 20 I'm not gonna hit 20. You, Oh hang on I gotta stop Forgot to turn off the packs, so you got to turn the packs off first. All right, now we can start. All right, let's do it again. Okay, number three. Start valves open. Now we should see into Ryzen. There we go, and we're waiting for it to cross 20. N2 is just the second one from the bottom. And there goes the fuel. Okay, we can see the EGT coming up. We can see N1 slowly coming up. N2 continues the fuels up and the pressure ratio kind of coming up. Not going to move a lot. We're at idle, folks. Make sure you're at idle. Okay, now when this light goes out, the oil pressure is up. I wait for it to stabilize. Okay, it looks like it has. And then I repeat for engine one. And then engine two afterwards. Again, N2 is right here. And I can hear you all going, why are you starting your engines in the spot? You young and whippersnappers out there are about to learn something about heritage aircraft. Historic. Especially these. Sorry, folks. Trying not to sniffle in your ears. 
Okay, so the EGT is about to stabilize. Our oil pressure is good. And we are stable, so let's go for engine two. Start up. Engine two. Light. And I forgot to do something. I'll get it in a second. It's actually not even in the checklist for you to do it. That's the saddest thing. All right. Here comes the engine up. Let's get over here and do it. Turn the fuel on. Flight engineer fell asleep again. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I have fun with the pretty boys up front. Got to have fun with the flight engineer sometimes, too. All right, so we got them all spooled up. Okay, let's go over here. First thing I'm going to do is get these suckers on the bus because that generator loves to fail on me. Once we have that established, I go back here, turn the packs on, and then shut the APU down. Okay. What happened? Why do I think... Oh, no. That's why. Forgot to move my essential power and synchronized or a secondary down here to a generator on the engines. That's why we had that weird look to it. And that weird look on the captain's face. Um, what happened? <laughs> All right, so we are ready. Now, what we've got to do, and I'm going to set this up first before we power back y'all are going there is no such thing as powering back today there there really isn't back then they did okay reject set probe heats on anti-ice you know what let's go ahead for safety get these on and uh we'll do a flight control check now one thing here about this flight control check, I'm not a big fan of this gauge. It works. It just doesn't do your ailerons. Uh, other than that, it's a great gauge. I mean, that is a major system. It should be checking. So, but anyway, we can do it this way. And I always do this because if I don't, I'll get on final approach, especially today, and I'll have the airplane and... I'll go like this, to ha you know, just simple, easy corrections, but yet the wheel will do this, meaning the ailerons and the airplane, you know, you got to get right back under it. So that's why I do it. It just seems to prevent that. Okay, and you can see the needles moving on that gauge. Now, with the rudder, you have two needles on there. You see how it's splitting a little bit? If you only see one of those moving... One of your hydraulics aren't on. First, look here. That's a telltale in a heartbeat. That's your hydraulic warnings. Then just come over here and figure out which one you forgot to turn on. <clears throat> okay, and after that, uh, we're not going to do weather or flaps just yet. EPR bugs, transponder, we'll get all of that in a second. But we are going to set trim. Like I said, click. And your trim is set. Okay, real quick comms and uh, stuff that we had not done yet. I kind of wait till this point. I know. You no, know you shouldn't. I get it. I know you shouldn't land when the weather's below minimums, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, you shouldn't depart when the weather's below minimums. Um, hang on, what am I looking for? Oh, yeah, Sydney. Uh, Sid. Okay. And 155. Okay. Now, one thing about this plane that I don't like, you may not have a problem with it. I do. All right. The DMEs here. Now, these are tied to the NAV 1, NAV 2. 
This one is actually DME2. Why is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. DME1 over here. So if you set DME1, which is nav1, which is on the pilot side for the pilot side of the panel, it's wrong. <laughs> I don't get it. Unless it's meant to work with this DME, this DME, and the RMI right here. I don't know. It's very confusing to me. Okay, I'm just a private pilot, folks. You're, you're ramping things up way too much on me. <laughs> That's why I can go when it's below minimums. Um, <laughs> have a fun with you guys over at Piedmont. <laughs> Okay, so 112.1, we're looking for, here, let me show you what I'm doing. You guys are going, what in the heck are you doing behind the scenes now? Okay, there's the chart, folks. Sydney 2, uh, transition altitude of 10,000. We're going to take off right here on 16 right. It's the longer of the two. Heading of 155 to 800 feet. And we'll read it here in a minute. Uh, but we're going to be on a heading of 155. Okay. I think I'm going the right way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then from there, we'll work our way over to Dipso. Okay. That's our departure, folks. There's our departure brief. We're ready to go. Um, now, as it reads here for six track 155 at 600, 800 feet for jets, turn to assigned heading or track. So I would assume tower would tell us on departure, fly runway heading at 800 or fly runway or heading. I'm just pulling this one out of the air, 020. Climb and maintain. I don't have an initial climb here that I see. So we'll go all the way up, but, um, and so forth. So you would still climb to 800 feet before making that turn. That's what this is saying. I don't think you level off at 800 feet. So if you do, you Aussies are awesome. Anyway, um, okay. Oh, I'm so used to it the other way around. All right. So we got the engines running. We're ready to go. We don't need a pushback tug. Hang on. Let me just make sure. Yeah, we're good to go. All right. So here's what we do. Now, I can attest, folks, to powering back. Living here in St. Louis, the D terminal at Lambert, there was maybe the nose and the nose wheel would be like right here to the building. I mean, they were right on it. There was no room for a tug to get in there. So they powered back. Oh, it would help to bring the air stair up. All right, we're ready to go. So. You guessed it. We put it in reverse. You want to check. Let's go up here. You see all three lights up. And here we go. Since we're going to 1-6 right, I plan to turn the nose to the uh, left-hand side. we on a slant? I didn't put hardly any power to this, folks. Okay. And mind you, there will be marshallers out there, just like in a tug. There's hand signals and everything for a power back signal. Um, and they're telling them, just like they have signals for coming in to the gate, to power back and what to do. Don't hit your brakes. 
Use the thrust. Once you go forward, then your brakes. Otherwise, you could tail strike. All right, so let's finish it up. Uh, weather radar can now come on. Okay, and transponder. T-A-R-A. -A. Let's check something I haven't yet. See if I'm actually online for you all. There I am. And I think right there. Okay, so yeah, I am online. Good. Okay. And here we go. Get the charts out of here. And got that on. Got that on. Taxi lights. And yeah, you're going to power back to where it's safe. And then we just push in some power and away we go. Uh, Sydney traffic uh, and set. Uh, what are we today? Um, taxi to runway 16. Right. I'll have to get my... Uh, my uh, number here. I totally forgot it. 387 comes to mind, but I'm pretty sure I am way off. That ain't helping. Hang on. You just aviate, then communicate. Eight seventy one way off let me just make sure we're not overshooting the runway I could just see us doing that okay so it is down here okay all right now you can see those things out on the wings are missing being down we'll do that now All right, flap set 20. And I am going to go ahead and set us for 35. Flight attendants, take your seats for departure. All right. Now, we do not have an auto throttle on here, folks. Okay, so flaps are indeed 2020. And, uh, okay, we're about ready for takeoff. One more check of the surfaces. And Sydney Tower and set uh, 871 departing 16 right, 16 right. Okay, let's bring it to a stop real quick. Do our quick checks. Or take off uh, attendance oil cooler. Yep, that's down here. Uh, on. We'll go to flight now. Fuel heat auto pack. Fuel heats are off. Auto pack set to normal. Start switches guarded. Packs as required. Let's do a packs off takeoff. Um, bleed set APUs off flaps 20 and 20. Start levers idle. Here we go. Let's 
strobe lights on. And just making sure I got the right altitude in here. 35,000. All right. Even though I think she may struggle to get to it. Right ahead of us, folks. If you're cargo dogs, that's where they go. One of two places. So the chart says. Well, since we have the displaced threshold, why not use it? Here we go, folks. Push in on the stick a little. Okay, airspeed's alive. There's 80. Hey, there's 800 feet. I'm going to go ahead and nose over. A little bit, not much. Now we're going to go into climb. For that, I'm going to go okay, and then get our first notch of flaps up. All right, we're going to get ready to go direct dipso. Get this thing on course and then we can start down the checklist.
Okay. Uh... Alright, we need to get up here. Packs on. Did we ever turn? I would have swore I saw it turning. Oh, we're... I got it. Okay. We're turning to intercept. Okay. I was like, are we even turning? <laughs> All right. And we'll bring this down to zero. There's 9,000, and folks, we're on our way. Let's get the wheels off. Now, according to PVA checklist, I leave the inbounds on until 18,000. Okay, there's 10,000. Okay, and again, as we get close to this, we'll switch to IAS mode. And what that'll do is climb the aircraft with the current thrust setting and uh, maintain roughly 280. Now, it's not a precise, and then once you level off, you maintain it with the throttles. Let's go ahead and go on nav here. And there you go, folks. We're on our way. I hope you all are enjoying. If you are enjoying this, hey, smash that follow button on Twitch. Love to have you on our next uh, excursion, uh, which will hopefully be Friday. We'll see. Um, uh, if you're on uh, YouTube, hey, hit that subscribe with the, and then hit the bell. That way you're notified when a new video posts. We do not fly live on you, uh, YouTube, just Twitch. So if you're on YouTube and you'd like to see us live and be a part of it, check the schedule uh, at Discord and or come over to our Twitch channel. Look at the schedule there. And uh, we'd love to have you aboard, folks. Love to meet you. So for now, we're just climbing out. Flaps are indeed up. And we're going to do a couple more quick checks here. We are in flight. Let's close these up a little bit more. I like to go to about halfway until we're closing in on 30,000. And uh, galley power's on, packs on. Cargo heat can come on now. 
We're 1,000 higher than our 35,000 crews just to account for the uh, atmosphere and how it is. It changed, you know, different pressure levels, so we kind of account for that. Okay, so we are, oh, we're above transition. It's 10,000 here. So we'll set to one zero and we've got the message up there. One, two standard. Okay. Then we go over here. Same thing. Unfortunately, we can't sync them that I know of. Then. And there you go, folks. We're through transition, and we can go ahead now and kill the inboard lights. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the wing and let us climb on up to altitude. Okay, we're over Dipso, headed to GUT4, as I call it, G-U-T-I-V. And on our way out of here, folks, hopefully, well, we'll see what weather is like. Uh, now, NWW. I know that one, and off the top of my head... I'm going to have to Google it. New Caledonia. So that is where our alternate is. So if we can't get in here, then we go up to New Caledonia. So again, I hope you all enjoy the ride. And uh, soon uh, we'll be uh, at altitude. All right, folks, as we're climbing up here, our verse of the day today is, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Now, that's Amos 524. Now, I can hear a lot of you out there. Oh, it's not. Martin Luther King said that. Yeah, he in so many words said that. He's not the first. Amos, prophet, Old Testament. 2,600 years prior to. Remember, Martin Luther King was a reverend. A lot of what he expounded, folks, was from the Bible. He's a preacher. What do you expect? Um, and that's a really good message for the injustices and the atrocities that were occurring in the racial side of things in the 1960s. Um so a very good quote that uh, he did uh, uh, put forth and use. Um, so Martin Luther King, yes, did in fact use that verse. Uh, so it tells you it's a pretty powerful one, folks. Let's hear it again, shall we? As I pull my sheet up here, man, I am just nothing is wanting to work like I, there it goes. Um, so again, it's 
But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That, folks, is not only what Dr. Martin Luther King was trying to get to us, so was Amos and many of the prophets uh, calling on the kingdom people to come and let the justice show forth. Well, when I speak of kingdom people, um, what I'm trying to say, uh, we are uh, um, how do I want to say this? Um, we're kind of God-centered people, meaning we look to God for righteousness to flow like that stream from them. Or simply put, we're Christians. Now, I'm not talking the pick your um, religion, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, and so forth, Methodist. I'm talking the church. Yes, as we look back over history, just as Dr. Martin Luther King was, we see many reasons why so many people left the church, left simply because they didn't trust the church, didn't trust God. In my humble opinion, it's because what they thought God's will was uh, just was a pipe dream. Kind of like the Jewish people of old, which is what Amos was writing to. Um, how can an almighty God allow all of this bad to happen? Slavery. All that happened to the Jewish folks. Folks, go back through the Bible. And I'm not, I mean, you can start in the New Testament. Rome was really oppressive, but not just to the Jewish people, to everyone except Romans. Um, they were super oppressive, but take it on back. I mean, look at the way the Jews were. I mean, you had Assyria, you had Alexander the Great, you had all of these massive, brutal regimes and governments. Uh, today, we see that in the news. So it's a, it's a wonder we keep people wondering, where's God? Why are, you know, so many people go, where is God in all of this? And, uh, yeah, you know, but if they look throughout that same history, God is there in the picture. He's just not where you think he should be. He's where his will puts him. It's God's will, folks, not your will. Throughout that same history we've lived through, um, those brutal regimes, I don't think Alexander the Great's still around, and Rome is still not doing what Rome did, let alone Egypt. The Assyrians, all of that now we could say, well, yeah, they are. No, not really. They were put down. Now, it took time. God uses the people to do that. Uh, but they end up smashed. And those who lead them, guess what? They end up in their graves disgraced. Uh, they may end up in their graves because of execution. But we revile them from that time on because of the atrocities they commit. So as kingdom people, what can we learn from history? Very simple. Prayer works may be slow but it works uh, we need to right now turn to prayer more specifically a prayer that we need to keep forefront in our minds at all times and when we pray pray as if it's already answered folks your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven God's timeline is not our timeline. But his kingdom will come. His will will be done on earth here as in heaven. So we as 
God-centered people. That's what the Jewish people were to have been back in the day. We should be professing that, showing that, and God's by showing it in our families, showing it in our friendships, showing it in our communities, shouting it in our churches so that people do see God is moving. I mean, he moves sometimes, as the saying says, in some of the strangest ways possible, but he moves, folks. And again, as I said before, pray like you think as it's going to be answered. Why do I say that? Well, about 2,000 years ago, we just kind of went through this in our uh, Easter celebrations, what's called Resurrection Sunday. Well, the events leading up to that, we all know the crucifixion of Christ. The Jewish people for hundreds and hundreds, if not centuries, were oppressed all the time. And every time they turned to God, God came to them. Well, they're praying. And they are wanting to get out of this overlord that was the Romans. And their prayers had them so arrogantly focused on a King David military type guy coming in to stomp out Rome. <clears throat> now, what we see in David... I don't know if they saw in David. We saw this young um, kid, if you will, take down Goliath. Not this big, mighty military machine take down um, Goliath. David did come in, did take out Goliath. But as many times seen in the Old Testament, the Jewish people were a stiff-necked people. Very arrogant, very knew, thought they knew who the Messiah was to be. Compared it with the scriptures, that's what you're supposed to do, that they had heard in their synagogues. And little did they know, God answered their prayers. Just not the way they wanted. walking with them in their midst, teaching, showing them how to live as that God-centered people he wanted the Jewish Abrahamic people to be. He was there. He even went so far when asked in roundabout ways, he was not there to uproot Rome. But he did come to change things. What the Jewish law had become from what was set forth in the Sinai with Moses was hurting its people, not helping them as the law was written. So he came to take care of that huge injustice. And because they were fixated that he was going to come and throw Rome out, they missed out on the answer to their prayers, as so many of us do, because we get so focused and we miss that stream from God that came through and cleaned it up. Open your minds. You know, that's what we hear from uh, the non-believers demanding that Christians must do. Open your mind. Come on. No. They also need to open their minds. Receive Jesus into your life and belief. Over time, after you do that, you will begin to see a world in a whole new light. It won't in a snap look different folks but boy when you start looking with that new lens that Christ gives you over time those atrocities while they remain become 
a little foggy, a little distant, a little further off. You don't see it, but you do see a new ray of hope walking with you, guiding and teaching you what God's will is for your life. Which, in the end, <laughs> you're going to probably go, oh, I'll never be a Christian. Those guys are just too uppity-ups and uh, they're just boring. You might find out your life isn't much more different than theirs. And go, why did I wait so long? See, there's that new hope for you that can help you and can help those around you. As God's will slowly takes hold, as you believe, as you have the faith that Christ says you must have, you're going to slowly watch as a God's will unveils itself before you in a whole new light. Just simply pray. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on that cross. Folks, that's actually what he came to do eventually, is die on that cross for your sins, to pay that ransom for our, you know, for your sins, for your inequities. And then you have to have faith that you have been forgiven. Folks, you have faith when you sit in that chair that man made. Why you have the faith that it's going to hold you up, I don't know. But you have the faith in that. You have the faith with that air blowing on you, and you call it the wind. But where did it come from? Where did it go? You have faith, folks. Whether you want to believe it or not, you do. Just look down at that chair again. It's holding your weight. That's not meant to be an offensive words to you, but it's holding you up. So you just need to believe and have faith in Christ. And folks... Let him be the captain of your life. I hope you have a great day. God bless. All right, folks, we're out over the Pacific now, headed towards our destination of Norfolk Island. Welcome to Flying with Mike. And uh, if you like what you're seeing and hearing and want more of it, folks, I'd love for you to smash that follow button. Love to have you on future trips. Uh, if all goes well, I think we're slated to go from JFK I think it is to Tampa on Friday. I don't have the schedule right up in front of me real quick. Uh, <clears throat> well, let's do it this way. But uh, that'll be in the 767. So, uh, But anyway, we have returned to Australia. It's been a while since we've been down under. And uh, we're flying out to Norfolk Island. Uh, we're going to be doing some flying down in here for a while. Uh, we'll keep some of our flights good and going there. Keep them up in the States going as well. And uh, Europe. Start up some stuff in the Far East as well, folks. So, hope you enjoy. I'd love for you to smash follow so we can see you on future trips. Um, if, again, you're on YouTube watching this after the fact, I know it's not live for y'all. Hey, down below tells you how to find us on Twitch. Look for the schedule. Join us on Twitch. We'd love to have you. Uh, but we love you on YouTube as well. If you are, click subscribe. That way you'll know when we uh, set up a new uh, uh, video to you. But for now, I'm going to take a quick break. See you in a few. All right, sorry for that abruptness, folks. Um, just want to let you know, my wife has a phone call, so I'm going to be right here, but I'll be muted. So you all have enjoy the flight. We'll be with you just shortly.
All right, folks. So again, I hope you all enjoy the the run. Uh, she actually uh, stepped out of the office, so uh, uh, we're just going to continue on to Norfolk Island, and uh, we'll be there here shortly. I do need to get back in the cockpit here because we're pretty close to level off. It's going to take a little bit to get into. Uh, slow us up a little bit here as we're getting onto the airway headed out to Norfolk Island. And we're closing in on 35,000. Should be, you know, right now we're at the optimum. So it should ease on up here. So, but if folks, hey, any questions, comments, love to see them in the uh, chat room. Um, first timers, love to definitely hear from y'all. So, we'll just kind of ease along here. We got about uh, an hour and, uh, what was that, 20 minutes? And uh, we'll be there sh here faster than you, than you think. Yeah, hour and 20 minutes. So, a couple of minutes from now, we'll start looking at that arrival and hope for the best. It's nighttime now there, so it may not work out that easily. <laughs> But we're going to enjoy anyway, folks. Even if we have to go to New Caledonia. Not planning on it.
All right, folks, we're back with you here. Get a little bit of power going here as we're uh, falling just a little bit below 0.8. That's why I keep the carrot right there on 0.8, so I know where we are in relation and what I need to do power-wise. So, <clears throat> all right, so we're leveled off at 35,000 feet on course. Hey, Mary's 727 in just, ma'am, we're having a great day today. Good flight so far. And uh, looking forward to this uh, interesting approach into uh, Norfolk Island, Australia. Out in the middle of nowhere, literally. All right, so let's take a look at it. You know what? Let's do it this way. A second, let me see if it's... Nope, it's not up here. Nope, you know what? Then we just not worry about it. I was going to do it over here on Sim Toolkit. And, uh, well, it's not on here, so poo-poo on that. So we'll bring up charts. All right, so there is the airport we are going to, folks. Um, again, if you're on aircraft like A330 or uh, the Airbuses or the later 737s, there's your coordinates. Makes, you know, gets it a little bit more realistic that they actually now can get those uh, working. I'll be honest, I have not tried it in the 737 as of yet. But uh, the Airbus, it's a piece of cake. So it can't be too hard in the Boeings. All right, so folks, that is the airport. I looked at it on Google. <laughs> there are no taxiways except Alpha. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, uh, and this is the primary, 6,300 feet. Oh, so that makes it even more of a challenge that we have a shorter runway. Grab that speed real quick. All right, so that's what we're working with. Currently, just to give you an idea what we have, there's where we're headed, where we're at. All right, so I am going to go ahead and bring up flights, right? The, the flights tab here. And what I'm going to do uh, there are no stars that I'm aware of, and there would be a select key here if there was. Approaches, plenty. And right now we're set for runway four. Okay, so we're either going to be one one or two niner. So. Let's, uh, before we get too far into this, what I'm going to do is cancel. And then let's get the weather. Because I'm getting some disparity here, folks. Okay, now this is saying one thing. 090 at 13, 1900 drizzle, overcast 200, which technically is below minimums here. Okay. But then, let me see if I can pull it up here on some toolkit. Here, let me uh, put it in. Y, S, S, Y, Y, S, N. F Okay, now I'm getting the same information. No, I'm not. 
as of 1930. I am not get. Uh, yeah, I am. Well, now I'm. Yeah, I'm looking. Airport. Oh Lord, have mercy! That would be why. Okay, I was looking at the wrong airport. That's why. I was looking at this one, and I'm going, "Hey, that's not bad, folks. We'll be able to do this with no trouble." I'm looking at the wrong airport. Okay, currently we are below minimums. 200 and uh, both ceiling and visibility so we know this going into it <laughs> we're in the flight sim world folks the virtual flights uh, federal aviation administration uh, well they're not around so guess what we're gonna shoot it anyway and well we'll see what uh, Piedmont does about it all right <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right, so 090 at 13. So that means runway 11 for the arrival. Hawker 125. Welcome in. Yes, it is a three holer day. Not the one you like. Coming in, we're going to be below minimums. And let's see. So currently, let's get the METAR again. Hello, METAR. Oh, did I hit it right? Die, die. <laughs> That's how it's going to be on approach. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, 090 at 13, below minimums. Uh, yeah, drizzle. Going to be fun. All right, well, with a 090, let's get back to the planning of this. Uh, we're going to come in on 11, so we'll switch this to the runway we're filtering. And we have the Arnav X Abvam or Delos VOR. And I think that's it. That's all we have. All right, so. All right, so we're going to go up here to Deos, Delos. Now, we're going to keep the track as is and at a predetermined point, probably. I got to look at the chart more. Uh, we'll come off of it, headed to Delos, and then make the run on the uh, uh, RNAV approach. Now, we're probably not going to have ILS settings and all. So we're going to rely heavily on the aircraft for this. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be fun, folks. You all didn't realize what the price of admission meant today. <laughs> so, all right. So we're, uh, let's get that chart here, right there. So like I said... We're going to come in at Delos. Track the... Anyway, well, let's look at the top. Okay, so we'll be in the Auckland... What the heck? Not sure what this is all about. CTAF for the airport's 118.1 Unicom. Okay, it's an RNAV approach. Final approach, once we get the pinky, uh, will be 107. 2,000 feet at Samot, which is uh, five and a half miles from the run. Wow. What kind of descent profile do we have here? Um, Arnip, DA, uh, 690 and 369. 
oh so close on the uh, uh, ceiling. And we'll see here. If we'll run through the rest of this real quick. So Delos, Breeze at 210, Pinky, all of this at or above 2000, 2000 at Samo, and then we go in. <clears throat> From Samo, we're going to probably be coming down at about 600, uh, doing the interpolation, 600 to 700 feet a minute, 630 to 700 feet a minute on the glide that's our glide path and it doesn't give us a time so when we hit 369 or 690 on the altimeter 369 here we'll go ahead and set and uh over here should be about so i'm sorry here 600 about right here we should see the runway I have faith in this folks all right so gotta see a lot of fun here so 2000 and then we start in on a 2.94 degree glide path wow seems pretty st okay well we'll go with it um so yeah there's our approach folks All right, so what I want to do now, go to legs. There's an RNAV. Why? There is a Y, but we're going to go with X. Yeah. Oh, this is not even showing transitions. Let's see how it's set up. Actually, well, you know what? Let's just... Uh, no. A-L-O-S. Did I... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I did end up picking the Y. There we go. All right, now that looks better. Easy. Oh, that's our missed approach fix. Okay, all right. Alright, so we're to Alright, so we've got that all plugged in, folks. We're ready to just keep going. We're about halfway there now, so the fun will begin when we get there. <laughs> 
All right, folks, I'm going to let the music run on here for a little bit longer. Progress, top of descent, 300. Uh, let's, uh, we need that, uh... We're not going to NF, we're going to Dalos. Um, here, let me uh, kind of play this out. I'll just kind of wing it. All right. Well, I got an idea where I want to do this at. All right. So 57 miles out. Okay. All right, so at about 60 miles, we'll start going to Delos. All right, so Delos, 60 miles plus... So About 90 miles out of on the airway to NF is when we'll start our descent and then we'll shoot the approach. So basically what we're going to be doing again, folks, getting charts up here. All right, so what we'll do, uh, we'll be coming in here. We'll do it this way. We'll be coming in on the airway here to N our, uh, NF. November Fox at about th uh, 40 ish miles from the VOR we're going to go direct Delos and direct then on the rest of the course here uh, the goal 2,000 feet here and I pinky I plan to have gear out probably flaps pretty close to the full and uh, approach speed pretty close. A lot going to be going on real quick, so I don't want to be behind the game here. Not with minimums at play.
All right, so there you go, folks. That's our departure or arrival brief. We'll switch to landing. Currently looking at 131. Oh, 140. So that changes my dynamic a little bit. So we'll be coming down closer to 720, 728 for the approach. All right, but we'll check this again as we get closer. So for now, folks, let's relax. Still got a little bit of time. I'm going to say uh, about 280 miles to our top of descent-ish. Because what I'm going to do is start it. And then we're going to roll into the RNAV. So um, got to be ahead of the game. All right. But for now... Kick back, relax, enjoy the great service from our flight attendants, and we'll be there, oh, in about a half hour or so. I do not know if the Sab uh, 340 is compatible or not yet. I do not even have that for X-Plane 11. Um, I know uh, Thronda's uh, Caravan is now out for uh, X-Plane 12. I just haven't gotten it yet. But don't know anything on that Caronado or the one I like, the Piper Navajo. Oh, a webcam. 
gnarly awesome. Uh, let's see. Serious? Hang on a second here. Yeah, I would put Gnarly is definitely, that's actually not too bad. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, those weather cams definitely look interesting. Well, we'll see if uh, X-Plane is up to the task. <laughs> oh. You know, the only reason they put those cameras out there, folks, is just to scare you from coming to them. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking to go around, probably. Yeah, we'll see. New Caledonia. Eh, gonna test our fuel tanks, but well, we'll we'll get up there if we have to. like most of the heaviest rains are south of the island uh, looking at sky vector so uh, you know we'll just kind of wing it fly a little bit of on the wing in a prayer Definitely an instrument day all around. I have, well, I think we were marginal out of uh, Sydney, but we're going to be IFR into. <laughs> 
Unless they don't show the weather right, so. All right, folks, this ought to be a fun run. Okay, we're now 200 miles out from top of descent. Uh, so let's begin working our checklists. Okay, shoulder harness, ADIs, ignitions are on. EPR bugs will set here at a, as we get a little closer, about a oh, 60 miles out, we'll set those. Fuel balance and heat checked, and hydraulics are at 3,000, so we're good for the arrival. And to be totally honest with you all folks, and you're all going to think I'm off my rocker, yeah, I'm par for the course there. Um, I don't think the clouds are all that bad here in X-Plane 11. Some days, many days, I think they're... I'm waiting again till we get into some severe weather, but I think they may uh, outdo it. X-Plane 12. But I don't know. You know, it's just me. I <clears throat> I do like all the hard work they've done, but folks, some days I just like the old X-Plane 11. Love to just take it up and fly around.
Ah, I got some crazy emojis going on here. All right, uh, the hardware I have for the sim, um, basically the Satec uh, X52 Pro, um, although I can't get the radio to work on the uh, uh, throttle quadrant, but yeah, uh, that's what I run. Every now and then it pops up there what my rig is, and I'm trying to remember the command on it. It's going to make me have to go look duck on it. Can't remember. I have a idea in my head. Let's see if it works.
Okay, just doing some work behind the scenes to make things look better. <laughs> Are you sure you're going to even be able to see me coming into uh, the airport? <laughs> One thing I haven't looked at here of late. See what thing. Oh, wow. See who's online. go folks let's see top of descent getting close let's see what are we reading here 102 uh, that's probably a good point let me see what we're gonna won't say 2300 and above okay My luck, I'm landing in a hurricane. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well this is going to be fun, folks. As you've been seeing and hearing, we are seeing METARs that are below minimums currently. But I don't really... I don't know if I'm close enough yet. Nope, not yet. Currently, 090 with 13, 1900 meters, drizzle, visibility, 200.
just trying to get some screenshots, folks. On, don't worry, your screens aren't going crazy. Just the guy, but the loose nut behind the wheel. Alright folks, let's get back in the cockpit here. Descent check minimums. <laughs> set. <laughs> Target ref set. Auto brakes required and uh, we'll set them as required and the cooling doors will open as we descend. Alright. Well, let's go up top here and get those auto brakes set. Uh, we're going to go with medium. Matter of fact, I might put them to max. We are landing on 6,400 feet of runway, so there isn't a lot for us. Um, so let's, uh, uh, we'll go with medium for now. If we need more, we'll put the feet to work. Do the old Fred Flintstone stop with the feet. All right, so we're getting, as you can tell, close. 52 miles out, so we'll go ahead and set for, uh, 7,000 for now. For some reason I thought standard was 1012, but it's 1013. Oh, righty. And transition. 13,000, okay. Of course, right at the end, we're getting fast. Okay, so we got our altitude set. Now, let's get our... Okay, so we're looking at 130, still 140. We'll do the approach at... Uh, flaps 30. Set bugs. Okay. So 130. Okay. And if for some reason we need to hold altitude we can do it between uh, right before Ria's Rizi, Riza and it'll be uh, left hand turns uh, 210 on the max
All right, so final approach course today is 107. All right, it is time to start thinking about a direct. Not going to be a big course change. Okay. And let's go back to Prague, see if that changed anything. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start our descent. Uh-oh, we're having problems with uh, that sim here. Alright, let's try that and see if that fixes it. Having internet issues here, folks, so disconnect from OBS for Twitch. My apologies, and uh, go figure. All right, folks, well, at least on YouTube, folks, you're going to get a uh, full video. Twitchers, you're going to just have to head on over. And uh, my apologies here, folks. Not much I can do about the Internet or what the heck causes this crud. But uh, OBS just reconnected, so hopefully those that were uh, in the chat room will rejoin us. I don't get this with them, but they don't ask me if I want to get it. So anyway, YouTubers, you got to see the whole thing, hopefully connection free, no issues with it, and uh, Twitchers. What you missed, if you want to check on it, head over to YouTube. A uh, couple days from now, this should be posted. Need to get more power off. <clears throat> you know, folks, I don't know um, if you watch a lot of superhero movies or not. I don't anymore. I'm kind of tired of them. Um, this music sounds a lot like uh, Dark Knight stuff. And my apologies if that movie has never made it your way.
I want to hear that one again. <laughs> and again, those of you that have seen the Batman movie Dark Knight kind of has that flair to it. Now the radar is not picking up anything, but I didn't expect it to. Let's do it. Heading select. Uh, looking at uh, two, three, five. We're just way too high, folks.
All right. Well, we're going to go around here in a little circle, losing some altitude before Delos. I'd like to come across there no higher than 5,000, um, ascending down to three. So we'll go out a little bit. We'll try a minute and see how that works. <clears throat> Let's get some speed break action in play here. All right, let's see how this does. Flight attendants, take your seats for landing, please. All right, let's go look at the approach. Altimeters are set, packs are on, and switch is set. We're going to... like we're still having issues with the internet all right because we're going to lose our server again for the second time but youtubers fear not we're still on with you I think we'll make it this time. Yep, we are down.
Yep, we're down. All right, so the internet's down, folks. <laughs> My apologies to you, Hey Marys. We won't be uh, able to be on disc on uh, VATSIM. We have come offline. Yep, gotta love the amount of money we pay for things and we get this kind of treatment. Alright, let's get this thing slowed up because we're entering the arrival phase. Actually, I don't even know if I can look to see where we are. This could be really fun. So here we go, folks. We're going into the clouds. Oh, we lost our altitude lock. How did we do that? Hang on a second, folks. Somehow we lost our altitude lock in all of this. Okay, so <laughs> this is going to really be fun. All right. Okay, skirting through the tops of the clouds here. Let's go ahead and go flaps one. All right, looks like they uh, listened to me. We might actually get on the internet here. All right, and we're still not up on Twitch, but we are on VATSIM. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead now. Bring it down to 600. We'll hold it right here till we get to Pinky. All right, folks. Twitchers, welcome back. Lights are on, brakes are set. And for now, okay, Riza, I want to start a nice, easy descent. back to 
All right, so, all right, so let's start that slow descent so we can make 2,000. Alright, we're set up and time for the gear. Norfolk Island traffic uh, and set. Uh, what is my number? Um, stand by. And set 871 on the RNAV for runway 11. As soon as we cross Samset, we'll set up for that 700 foot a minute descent. Don't want to get slower than 140. Get some more flaps in. Gears down, three green. Guess what, folks? We just crashed. <laughs> oh. Uh. Oh, man. 
You knew that was coming. Why can't I shut it down? I guess I gotta start a new flight. Okay. There we go. One of those kind of days, folks. Oh, hang on. Let me just do this. Well, unfortunate, we did end up in a crash. And this will still get posted because I did things you shouldn't do, like drop down to 200 feet without seeing the runway and all of that good stuff. Oh well folks, it was fun even though we had a lot of internet issues. Um, just, it is what it is. <laughs> so, let me finish the report here. And, well folks, I'm going to tell you right now, I had a blast and, uh, Hope you did too, even with all the troubles we had. Um, <clears throat> not much we can do. Well, yeah, a lot I could have done, but I just, too much going on in the cockpit at once made it pretty rough for me as well. So, hey, a lot of excuses, but the bottom line is, folks, hey, if the airport's below minimums before you take off, wait till it comes up or find another place. All right, for Flying with Mike, folks, we're going to call it. I hope you all have a great day. God bless you all. We'll see you on the next flight, hopefully Friday. Thank you.